Okay, so we're back again, and this time I'm going to switch the uh, image rendering process um, over to uh, using Ashley, so that instead of having this uh, this image just sort of hard coded here, there will be a uh, rendering system component. Rendering system. Uh, first thing we want to do is turn off this annoying spam system. I think the the points have been made and it uh, doesn't really need to be there anymore. So we can just disable this here. And okay, so the next thing that we want to do is um, create and attach an entity to the engine. And an entity represents any sort of object, whether you can see it or not, in your game. Um, I'm going to create a create entities method. So Right now, we just want to say add entity, entity, and this is going to represent the, the logo image. And um, right now, it doesn't do anything yet. So with apply, you can add on components to that entity before just before it gets added into the engine. And so there's really two components of uh, what this entity needs in order to render. There's the texture, and there's the coordinates. So the texture we can just call, we can just create a texture component, and it'll take that image that's already created. And there will also be a transform component, which represents the, the XY transform. And we're just gonna say zero, zero. So for the texture component, this is just a class that takes, you know, whatever arguments that you need, and it implements component. You don't actually need it to have a body right now. Um, components should be very simple. They don't need to be data classes, but they should be pretty close to data classes, and, and really not have any behavior of their own, except minimal behavior to modify their inherent state. So here we have this texture. And we also have one more transform component. And actually, I don't want this to be zero, zero. I want this to be a vector two of zero, zero. So we just say, there we go. Um, so now, we have this entity, and it has these uh, components attached to it, but we're not doing anything with it yet. So uh, the other sort of the thing that consumes the entities is these systems. Um, there's uh, if you actually look at entity system, um, it has a number of subclasses that are interesting. Um, you don't uh, you often don't need entity system. You you'll want like iterating system. Um, iterating system takes a family, which is really just a collection of components and uh, of component classes, and allows you to iterate over everything that has those components. And that's exactly what we want here. So if we go back here and we create a new class uh, rendering system, and we want it to be a iterating system and it takes a family. And families are constructed um, by calling family dot uh, all or exclude or one, depending on exactly which component sort of filters you want. All it just means it, it needs to have all these components. And we really need a transform component and a texture component in order to uh, you know, actually render this object in the right position. And then you say dot get. Um, Lastly, we need to implement process entity. And process entity is, as you might expect, called for every entity during a frame. And so now, um, process, you know, it's called for each and every entity, but there's nothing sort of called before and after each frame inside this system. And we actually want that because if you imagine that we had several entities here, we'd want to call batch.begin once, and then batch.draw for each entity, and then batch.end after that. So um, let's worry about that in a second. Uh, we want something that looks like this. 
Um, so except we don't know what our image is and these coordinates are going to be wrong most of the time. So now we want to inject our, uh, our sprite batch. And now, well, let's just rename this to batch for consistency. And uh, so we don't have the image right here, but we know it's on the entity. And so one way, the, the, the naive way to get this uh, component is to say um, uh, image equals uh, uh, entity dot get component texture component. Um, class of Java, and then this returns an object, you know, the texture component. The texture component has a field texture. Um, this is actually not the optimal way of doing this, but I'll, this is just for a demonstration. I'll come back to the right way in a little bit. So now the next thing we want is, we really want, like, well, we want to get the position, and you say entity like a component, um, transform a component position. And so now here, position dot x, position dot y, and we're almost done. The last thing we need to do, well, okay, two more things we need to do. The next thing we need to do is make sure that this is actually running here. Um, and so now rendering system will will run on every on every update. Uh, we still haven't handled this batch begin batch end thing, so. We actually want to override one other method, which is update. And if you look at the um, the upstream update function in iterating system, you can see the, the default update it calls process entity on every entity. And so we actually you know we still need that. That is the main thing that we're using iterating system for. But we want to do something before and after. So you just want to say batch dot begin and batch dot end. So now, you know, we'll start the batch and we'll iterate through, we'll call update, which calls process entity, and then we want to end the batch. So now we want to delete this, and engine.update is already, already running, and so that's, that's everything we need. You can see it's still rendering, which is great. Um, so the right way to get uh, so if you actually look at get component, like get component calls component type I get four component type I get four calls uh, you know and it looks up in this map for this component type and it creates a component type if it needs to, and get component itself um, looks up an array thing. And it just it makes a lot of method calls for something that's going to be happening a lot um, in every single frame. So what you really want to do is create a companion object. And in this companion object, you want to have a mapper class that's just component mapper um, dot get for uh, transform component class dot Java. And now, it, well, and you want to do the same thing for every one of your every one of your components, pretty much. Um, and so now, the right way to do this is you refer to that mapper. You say texture component dot mapper dot you know you can say dot get or you can just use square brackets. And this does the the same sort of thing. And we want to use transform components instead. Um, so uh, one thing that's um, fr that I find frustrating is that you have to copy paste this this three lines um, uh, every time you want to have a new transform. So you can actually one thing that's really cool with Kotlin is you can actually have your companion object, which is sort of the, the static um, class sort of thing. Um, you can have it implement interfaces and extend other classes. So you can actually create another class called um, component resolver and uh, it can have this, this mapper class. Um, so 
So now you can just say val mapper equals component mapper uh, get four. Then you pass in the component class. And it doesn't actually work because um, it's expecting t to be a subtype of component, which it's currently not, it's currently unbounded. So you can just say, okay, t has to be a component, and now it works. So this is nice. It allows you to say, to get rid of all this junk, and instead you say create a you know create a component mapper sorry a component resolver here of that's generic over transform component and that stuff. Um, it's still a bit of boilerplate. You still have to repeat the class name twice, uh, which isn't great, but um, yeah, it's a little bit better. Uh, one more small improvement is to say instead of texture component mapper entity, it'd be really great if we could just say something like uh, like this. If we could just, you know, drop this whole mapper thing. And it looks sort of weird because it looks like it's, um, you know, indexing into this class directly, but it's actually, a, it's a method on the, the companion object. Companion object. The companion object implements, it is a comp uh, component resolver. So you can say um, uh, something like this. And the operator means that the, the, the square brackets thing will work and get is just sort of the magical method name. And here you can say um, get entity. And now when you try to run things again, it should work just fine. So the last, last little trick that I um, tend to do is uh, this texture component thing. Um, you're going to have, you're going to be typing this a lot, probably. Um, so uh, for the components that you don't use very often, this is fine. But I prefer to just say entity.texture. Um, and entity uh, transform because these are both very very common and so the way you can do this is through a little um, extension method you can just say um, entities have this method called texture and it's a texture component and the way you get it is by saying um, texture component um, this because this is on the entity so this refers to the entity object. And so now you want to do the same thing here for, um, okay, well this is backwards, <laughs> but uh, if you modify the original one, you just okay. So now you can say entity.texture.texture and entity.transform.position um, anywhere that these, these methods are in scope. Um, I'm going to move these to, uh, yeah, okay. Um, I'm going to move these to their own file just for organization purposes called components. And everything's still working. So, um, yeah. So once again, um, this is this is laying the groundwork for how all the entities and transforms um, and textures are going to work in your game. So next time I'm going to talk a bit more about uh, actually bringing a camera into the game because right now, if you look at uh, the rendering system, the position and the images is it's all in screen coordinates. So in general, you, you don't you don't position things in screen coordinates. You position things in world coordinates, like meters. So um, that's especially important when you bring in a physics physics engine, where the physics engine will be speaking in um, world units as well.